If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. You're her son. Sarah de Richet's son. Yes, why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Excuse me, but speaking frankly, why would you care? I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you. Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No, I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. Look, I've... I've gotta go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? I want to find out what really happened. No, you really don't want to know what your mother did when I shed my first blood at puberty. On the contrary, you can tell me anything. Let me be my own judge. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Take your father. I'm sure he tried everything to save you. Sure, he tried everything. To keep me from upsetting his political affairs. Once I was declared insane, I was nothing but a burden that got in the way of his career. By leaving me with your mother, he made all the horrors possible. Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fits stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to... separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. 
Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's come here for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. What's on the first floor? The first floor is reserved for guests, sir. That is where sir will find his private rooms. The main corridor leads around the building. Three stairways will enable sir to return to the ground floor. It is also from there that sir will be able to reach the second floor. Thank you very much. Anything else, sir? Yes. What can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, sir. In the west wing on the second floor are his private chambers. In the east wing are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. At the moment, these rooms are reserved for Sir Holm, sir. But only authorized guests may access that area. Does sir have any more questions? Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured, the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, Sir should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Yeah, except for my mother. Has Sir another question? What is outside on the island, exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise sir to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help, sir, in any other way? What do you want? Mm, I'd rather keep all my teeth. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet. Allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. 
Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. Oh, please, go ahead. Um, what do you want to know? Surprisingly, you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason and great lever of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. And right he was. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I've taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest mines of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. <laughs> you have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Oh, monsieur. You must what do you think of Volner? Many believe he is the real leader of Prussia. And right he was a charming man, but with an iron fist and a velvet glove. I also know he's famous for his love of the high information on this Napoleon. <laughs> he's just a soldier, not even a high-ranking one at that. I'll bet he's just here for some minor business. I wouldn't be so categorical. No one is ever invited here just by chance. You'll see. Yes, I heard the news. What a story. Monsieur de Richet? It would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Surely not. Of course. Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. 
He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannons. Surely such an amount will buy twice as many cannons. Don't try to pull a fast one on me. We're both young, but we are not naive. Please don't be offended. I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. And I am reassured. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? The revolution was a good thing, but it gave birth to a monster. We must overthrow the new system in place. Ah, you are right. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. All right, let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. Well, Your Eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Wollner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that Your Eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. 
But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing, your minutes. But I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. Well, I, I must admit, Your Eminence, indeed it does worry me. I understand, but continue to have faith in Sarah. You'll see, I'm sure, that in a few days we'll all be laughing together. That's all I hope for, Your Eminence. But while I have you with me, I, I have a question for you. Well, go ahead, Louis. What can I do for you? As I haven't visited all the manor yet, I wondered if you hadn't seen a Medusa by any chance. I beg your pardon? Yes, la, la Gorgogne, the Medusa from Greek mythology. Would you have seen one in any shape or form? Not at all, my son. I'm not sure what you're getting at, but unfortunately I, I'm not going to be of any use to you. Thank you anyway, Your Eminence. I won't take up any more of your time. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son. size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? Devil's Thorn. I'll keep it. I've got to find out what Mother was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword? Hmm. A hero with a lantern. And the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand.
Ah, for Pete's sake, Emily. You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. I was feeling a bit peckish. I went in search of the kitchen and I ended up here. Your sense of direction is mind-boggling, isn't it? Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh yeah, in your dreams. At your service, madam. The heavenly symbols refer to Pandora's box. Emily, I'm pretty sure I've got Pandora's box. Of course you have. You see an earthen pot and you immediately assume it can only be Pandora's box. Logical. What I like about you, Louis, is that you never fail to surprise me. Emily, what if I open the jar? Would that then make man responsible for all the evils? Try, it'll make a change. All right, can we move on now? I do love your irony, but honestly, are you ever impressed by anything you see? By a chamber pot? No, you really do need to do better than that. A golden fleece. It's freezing, hurry up. Cold? You want a rug? It'll warm you up. I wouldn't be caught dead in that horrible thing. That's a pity. The gold color brings out your eyes. And your flattery brings out your boorishness. An unofficial gospel? You'd be more likely to find this kind of book at the Vatican. Nothing special. The library at Buckingham has three. How did the English manage to get their hands on them? When someone wants to attract the attention of the world's leading power, somehow the gifts just pour in. You wouldn't have gone to the Vatican recently, would you? Are you calling me a thief? Certainly not. Never entered my mind. Hey, a Russian ruble. I wonder what it would be worth today. Guess what I found? The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's laurel wreath. Do you know why laurel wreaths are used and not, say, mistletoe or another plant? The laurel wreath symbolized glory in Roman times. In your opinion, what kind would suit me best? Mm, a crown of nettles. Well, looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes, written by Mortimer himself. You should see this sword, Emily. It's magnificent. I'm busy. Describe it to me. I think it's a sort of Genghis Khan. Brush up on your classics. Asian weapons are definitely not this shape. All the swords forged in Asia don't necessarily have a curved blade. Are you blind? It's a thrusting saber, a pure product of the West. When you don't get the last word, your repartee goes all aggressive. <sighs> when you finished playing, maybe you can help me search the place? Amber.
her. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine, hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia, properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? Several people have played the part of Mortimer, a part that has been passed down from generation to generation. Different men, but with one sole identity. An intriguing hypothesis, and yet less twisted than some of my previous cases. At last, you finally agree with me about something. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know, I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So, do you think she found what she came for? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer, and I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Mortimer's collection is unique, isn't it? That's an understatement. No doubt he has a major passion for history and fine art, or getting gifts. If each time Mortimer does someone a favor, they reward him with a priceless gift, that means he must have helped nearly everybody in the world. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? When are you going to understand that I just want to help you? What do you expect? That I'll fall into your arms and say yes to everything you want? What are you talking about? I'm only asking you to trust me a little. If only on principle, as a member of the Golden Order, for example. I'll admit you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? You think your scathing wit protects you, but in fact, it makes you blind. No sooner have people introduced themselves than you already see them in a bad light. You play the part of a strong woman, and yes, you are a strong woman, of course. But what I see is a sensitive young lady who lacks self-confidence. Stop adopting a defensive posture, and you'll see just how quickly new doors will open. There is some truth to what you say. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Yes. You're the kind of girl who gets by on her own and who shares nothing. The fact is, you are completely mistaken about me. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me, but I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? Mm, no, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. 
It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler? So, your partner is... Chances are, you're working with a member of the Order. The only members of the Order other than ourselves are your mother and Mr. Washington. The former has sadly gone missing. As for the latter, I knew nothing of his arrival. Incidentally, you must have noticed how inefficiently our Order communicates internationally. Your sister. She's your partner. She's the one you're looking for. Well, I am impressed. How the devil did you guess I had a sister? Virtually no one even knows. When it comes to getting results, you are very good. I grant you that. You deserve to know why the sight of the cameo pendant affected me so strongly. I thought it belonged to Emma, my twin sister. Oh. Now I get why you said you had a memory for two. Yes. You can't imagine to what extent, though. As children, everyone got us mixed up. So one day, we decided to play along. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Clever. But isn't it complicated? How do you make it work? One of us has no existence in the outside world. We share everything. First for one. Then for the other, we dress the same, wear the same makeup, we speak the same. We've learned to act as one. When we accept a mission, we both turn up. This time, though, she went ahead and I was meant to wait for her on the mainland. She was meant to meet Sir home and bring back the details so we could work out who would follow up. And there was a problem? She was supposed to return for Mortimer's one week ago. The boat turned up at Plymouth, but alas, no trace of my sister. Instead, a sailor passed me a message from home, notifying me of her sudden disappearance. So, my mother and your sister go missing just a few days apart. That's strange. Maybe their disappearances are linked. It's clearly a possibility, but up to now I haven't found a trace of either of them. None of this is very reassuring. By the way, Louis, now that you are in on the secret, you are obliged to keep it to yourself or you will pay very dearly. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. It's time to leave. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit it has been fun by your side. Same here. She's been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now. Otherwise, it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Sorry, Emily, but I can't leave Elizabeth like this. All right, Elizabeth. How can I help? Thank you. Come on, follow me. Well, Elizabeth, what was so urgent? For God's sakes, what happened in here? I really need to talk to you, Louis, right now. Does Lord Mortimer know the mess you've made of your room? Listen to me, damn it! My days are numbered. Elizabeth, I don't know if it's about my mother again, but I'm telling you, you've nothing to be afraid of. She didn't come here for you. I saw her. Saw who? You saw my mother? When? Just last night. I went out to walk along the cliff top and I saw her in the distance. 
She tried to hide right away, but I'm sure it was her. Are you saying you recognized my mother in the middle of the night while she was hiding? Yes, Louis. I know it was her. You just said she was far away, right? In the middle of the night. And the exterior of the island isn't exactly well lit. Listen, I'm telling you it was her. Did you talk to each other? No, she was far away. I, I didn't make any noise, and then she was gone. Have you told anyone you've seen her? Sir Holm? Mortimer? You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening. The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here. I'm telling you, it was her. Yes, I need something to calm me down. I'll drink with you, but let's go easy on it, okay? I don't know where she gets her rot cut from, but frankly, it's disgusting. You know, Louis, when I came here, it was in the hope of getting help. I've only just now realized that I've been drawn here into a trap. Whoa, the alcohol's gone to my head. Here, the condemned's last drink. Man, I, I need to take it easy with the booze. At this rate, I won't last the night. Let's go easy on the drinking, okay? Alcohol won't solve our problems. Ugh, the second one isn't any easier. So, do you want to know why she did all those things to me or not? Even if it changes the image you have of her forever? What was she trying to cure you of then? Of the one illness she never managed to treat me for. Come on, Elizabeth. We have to finish what we started. I feel all dizzy. There must have been a reason. Just tell me. Tell me what my mother treated you for. She wanted to silence them. What? What are you talking about? Silence what? The voices. The voices in my head. They speak to me, Louis. They've always told me what to do. They say nasty things to me. Elizabeth, are, are you saying that, that spirits talk to you? You're right. Sometimes there are several voices. How did you know? No, listen, I, I don't know anything. I, I'm just repeating what you said. They want me. Want me just for themselves. They talk to me all the time. Yet your mother did everything to make them go away. Ever since I was little. And look at the result! It's impossible, Mother. You spent your life trying to prove that the supernatural doesn't exist. Why punish this poor girl? Oh, shit. What has she done to you? Uh-oh, Louis. Are you starting to believe me? No, but... Sh Too bad it's all been for nothing. They're still there, you know. What do you mean? They're still talking to you? All the time. Despite everything Sarah put me through, I still hear them. And here I am on a lost island, knowing that no one knows me. And I find myself here at the exact same time as her. You see? You understand? You sense it too. I'm going to die here. I beg you, tell me you believe me! I'm here, Elizabeth. I'm right here with you. And I do believe you. Thank you, Louis. You know, despite what people might think, I'm not crazy.
My god, Elizabeth, how is this possible? Welcome to my world, little Louie. Welcome to my life. Elizabeth, the whole story stinks of death. If I were you, I'd have left the moment you heard me speak about my mother. I don't know if she knows you're here, but if I had any doubt, I wouldn't take the risk. Yeah, you're right. I can't stay here another minute. I need to get the hell out of here. I need to find a boat and get away. I'm not dying here. Oh, I feel so dizzy. You like my little concoction, don't you? That's rare. What? It no longer has any effect on me, but my guests generally don't appreciate me mixing alcohol with laudanum. What? You put laudanum in my drink? In both. Don't worry, my little Louie. We'll sink down to the bottom together. Oh man, I feel like puking. I really feel like shit. Ugh. I gotta get back. Don't worry, Louie. I'm here now. I'll take good care of you, and then I'll leave. Don't touch me! Just leave. If I get up, I'll fall. 